architect blueprints in the building room. They're being very nice to me by allowing me to um, demonstrate some things here. Today I want to talk about timing, what mechanically happens in the engine, how it's related to the timing table that you see in your maps. Hopefully this will help you guys figure out some issues you might be having. Um, I've been asked a lot of questions about this, so hopefully you watch the video and it'll help you. All right, so we're talking about timing, um, how it affects your motor, what exactly it is, and um, how do we set our base maps based on you know, what we want out of the car. So timing here we're talking about is ignition timing, not the uh, actual crank camp timing. We're using this motor to demonstrate. This is a 4B11. Um, as you can see, this is a Hurt motor. One of the professionals, um, basically tuned it and a month later catastrophic failure it was running lean you know there was detonation on this cylinders but for our purpose we just want to know what timing is so timing ignition timing to be specific refers to uh, when the spark plugs ignites the air fuel mixture ratio so how does the computer know how does your um, computer know when to do it so it uses a reference point in front of the motor, uh, somewhere here, there is a, a timing gear. On the timing gear, there's a notch, which indicates top dead center, or if you look up on the internet, it's referred to as TDC, which basically means your piston number one is on top dead center, which means all the way to the highest position that it can possibly get before it starts moving downwards like this. So this is top dead center, and this is downwards. Two key um, elements in timing is advance and retard. So advance means igniting the air fuel mixture on the way up. When the piston is traveling to top dead center, that is called advance. And the retard is when the, when the air fuel mixture is ignited on the way down, on the downstroke. So the significance of that is retard timing will produce less power than advanced timing. The more advanced timing to a point, um, you'll basically make power. So once the, the ECU re uh, recognizes that, hey, this is top dead center and the piston is on its way up and it's a you know, certain distance away, uh, it's calculated in gears or toots or degrees, um, how much before, how much time or angles before of the crank, before we can ignite. So usually, um, for example, if it's, you know, say, I don't know, like 20 when you're not running on boost or anything like that, um, and it ignites, it's, it needs to, it, it travels up while the flame is growing in the combustion chamber. So it kind of compresses uh, the exhaust flames as well, creating more downforce on the downstroke because now the air fuel mixture, the exhaust mixture is pushing the pistons down. So again, to a point, right? Once you go too advanced at a certain RPM or, you know, depending on your fuel, um, the motor is actually fighting it because you cannot stop the force from going up. So what causes is knocking, pinning or whatever else people, terminology people use. So I usually start low, um, you know, work your way up. Interesting fact is um, a good way to think about timing is actual time spent um, in igniting the air fuel mixture. So more time you allow for that flame to be grown and complete burn, the more torque you'll produce. Another key factor is top dead center dwell, which basically means how much time does this piston uh, spend on top dead center. If you could look at uh, my rotating wrench here, see this, this play right here, that is the dwell time. So while at top, the piston sits there without moving for this many degrees. So when you ignite, say here, and flame is growing, it's growing, 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 and it still sits there, and then it pushes the, on the way down. Um, that's due to stroke and rod length, 
that creates a lot of torque and power. And that is probably one of the main reasons other than um, actual displacement why stroker motors produce um, more power. This is one of the basic reasons as well on top of displacement. So tuning wise that is very very important to know that your your engine is you know your your piston is sitting at top dead center for a short period of time. Um, so you know you play with the dwell time of the ignition spark plugs which is basically how long the spark is inside the spark plug jumping the arc and it stays there. Um, so that's basically the start point. I hope I explained it well enough. Um, if I haven't, please correct me. Um, let me know uh, if there's any other questions. And the next thing I'm going to show you is a four, I'm sorry, 4G63 motor. All right, so this is a 4G63 motor. This is a stroker motor. It's um, uh, 94 millimeter, I believe, 94 millimeter stroke. And this is a uh, very long rod. Um, so as I was demonstrating before, piston dwell time, um, as you can see, let me see if I can show it to you, this piston, if you focus on that, and look at the my wrench, it spins this much. That's a lot uh, at top dead center uh, compared to the other motor I showed you previously. That's due to the long rod and being a little bit more of a stroker. Um, it's very key that you know your tuner knows that and understands what's going to happen because if it keeps running advanced timing The piston has nowhere to go Once it goes to the top and it spends this much time and the flame is still growing. It's really going to push the piston back um, Yeah, creating torque but at the same time. It could be dangerous So again starting low is very very good uh, Next video the differences between 4B11 and 4G63 so now that we have a better idea of what happens mechanically uh, in the engine and the correlation to ignition timing, I wanted to show the corresponding maps uh, for the Evo uh, 8, 9 and um, Evo 10, the two motors that we looked at. So this is a uh, Tefra V7 map for Evo 10, I'm sorry, Evo 8. And this is already in uh, speed density mode. Typically, this is downloaded from you know the internet. Um, these are free, very popular. A lot of people use it. I'm just gonna go right to the timing table, and if we take a look at the timing, as you can see, there are three elements in this timing. One is RPM, uh, and the other one is load. Now, this is load in kPa. So. Um, for our purpose, there's going to be another video on how to translate this to boost and uh, how you can control, you know, where um, your cells land based on uh, some of the other tables and scaling your four bar map sensor or five bar map sensor, whatever you have. But for our purposes, um, let's just, you know, assume that below 100 load, it's all vacuum. Your car is not in boost. And above, uh, 100 is boost and let's just assume one to one ratio so um, you know 100 is zero and then 20 pounds of boost is you know 200 or 210 load um, so let's assume that and kind of go over what the engine is doing and the computer is doing the ECU is doing uh, to kind of help the timing as you can see 500 RPMs, which your car does not run on, um, you should set this value a little higher. It'll be easy to start. Uh, in aftermarket ECUs, you can actually lock these values, so it always gives you a certain value uh, when you start it. But you know, this is a stock ECU; this doesn't have that feature. So below 100, starting is 16 degrees. I leave it at that usually. Sometimes I put it to 20, um, and my, your idle, you should be technically starting with a little bit higher, depending on your cams and you know what mods you have on the system, and lower it um, as you need. If the RPM is too high, keep lowering the timing and adjusting the idle maps until you get it. But what I wanted to show you is how the timing is set in the ECU. As you can see, this is very, very high. These numbers 
are in degrees. So 33 degrees of timing. The, the crank actually has 700 plus degrees that it operates on. So 33 degrees uh, before top dead center on the compression stroke. To make it easier, I personally think of these as time, as in time elapsed, not degrees or anything like that. The, the higher this time is, the longer your, your combustion mixture has the ability to grow um, because you're igniting the air fuel mixture so earlier, so much earlier on, uh, on the compression stroke. So at low RPM and low load, this is, you know, right barely out of idle. You're not even in boost. You're running in 200, I'm sorry, 2,000 to 3,000 RPM, not getting into boost. You're cruising around town. The engine is very, very slow. It needs that time. It needs uh, a lot of timing to kind of make a complete burn to make more torque. So off boost, this is fine. Right here, after 100, between 100 to uh, 200 load, um, it's basically spool. This is your spool area. So you really have to know your turbo, right? Um, some turbos, like I had a 7275 that I hit full boost um, at 6,000 RPMs. But before that, it started spooling. Like I got, I don't know, like, 14 pounds around uh, 5,500, so it was here. But a stock uh, Evo 9 uh, or 10 um, turbo will actually, you hit full boost around 35 to 4,000, uh, you know, whatever that may be. So your spool area is anywhere from, you know, 22, 2,500 to, say, 3,700. So this is your spool area. Um, as you can see, the the timing dramatically decreases. I personally don't like seeing anything above six uh, degrees of timing at peak torque. And peak torque will be a few hundred RPMs after you hit full boost. So if you step on the throttle and you hit full boost around 3,500, peak torque will be right here. So for that, I actually, you know, uh, my timing, my, my boost is set to 25 PSI. So this is about the load that the ECU sees, uses as 25 PSI. So I set this whole thing, this right area, you know, I hit full boost at 35. So I take two, 35 and 37, and I take the boost, 25 to 26, and I set the whole thing to two or three degrees to start. So what happens is the ECU will take this route, it'll follow this route, and you won't, you know, hit high timing during peak torque. That'll save your internals. After that, um, it'll start, you know, going down like this, and it'll come, it'll kind of come back because you'll lose boost up top if you have a stock ECU. So it'll follow the timing down low like this, and it'll end up somewhere where your red line is around, I guess, 7,000, 7,500. So your peak timing is here. To note, uh, the more important things to note here is how the transition is. The timing during spool up uh, on 93 octanes, this is what I run on stock bottom end. That is mine. You have to play with it depending on you know, what kind of turbo you have and everything. Um, and then I gradually increase it. On E85, uh, on uh, you know exotic fuels, you could run you know heavier timing after the peak torque but my experience on 93 octanes these timings the peak timings i tend to stop at like 14 15 maybe depending on the quality of the fuel a lot of factors go into that um you want to make this as smooth as possible so as you can see my timing map is very smooth seven uh six you know one or two degrees changes which makes the car very smooth, acceleration is smooth, and less knocking. And that's what you want. Dramatic changes in timing will cause you more knocking. If you have six here uh, and you have, say, you know, 15 here, you'll knock over there. Um, so you don't want to do that. Very smooth uh, timing in any car. It doesn't matter what it is. Any car, any ECU, that's what the car likes. Just remember, uh, 
slow RPM, low uh, loads, you can run high timing, you kind of have to. Um, and then transition into boost, the spool area. You want to slow it down. You want to play with it as much as you can, see what your car likes and does not like. And then peak torque, I wouldn't go above six just to be, you know, on the safe side. And then, you know, gradually just increase it. Um, so when the piston speed increases, uh, it's coming up to top dead center faster. You kind of have to ignite it earlier. So that's why the timing increases as RPM increases um, and timing decreases as load uh, increases. So those are the two methods. Um, and then a few and um, two uh, things to look out for when you are doing your timing. Let's take a look at uh, 2010. This is a Evo 10 Tefra V3. This is flex fuel map. Let's look at the timing on this. See, very similar. Uh, the load is obviously a little bit less, but same concept. This is a completely stock map. Over here is negative. You're never going to hit these areas. Think about it. You're never going to be in 30 pounds of boost at 1,000 RPM, so I wouldn't worry about those things. Um, so that is 4B11 and 4G63. Um, how I personally start my timing. If you have large cams, you want to, you know, say you set your RPM to 1000, you want to increase that area of timing uh, higher until you find the right spot where what timing the car likes with the cams and the intake setup that you have. Stay tuned because there will be more videos. Um, I am actually planning to do A to Z tuning on Evo 8's basic uh, modifications, the most common, one, common ones. So if you do see our video, this is BD Alchemist. Uh, subscribe. And